This is a street in one of the most progressive and healthiest cities in the world. And it's a glimpse of a car-free, greener, happier future that could be coming your way soon. In this city, cars are completely banned. 98% of households own at least one bicycle. And in 2020, they did something totally amazing. This is Utrecht, city of the future. It has been making bold moves to prioritize people and their health and happiness since the 1970s, when they stood up to the modernist car movement after a 12-lane motorway was built through the city center on top of their 800-year-old canal. This enraged the population and set the city on a course that put people first where they would implement innovative measures that would go on to influence so many other cities after them. Utrecht is a city in the Netherlands. Cars are banned from the city center. 98% of households own at least one bicycle. And the city streets consist of bicycle lanes, walking areas, green spaces, a canal system. It also has 316 biodiversity bus stops and very, very minimal traffic. However, this was not always the case. The people had to fight to make it like this. After dramatic town planning in the 1960s, removed the city's ancient canal system, replacing it with the 12 lane motorway. This was the 800 year old city moat of Utrecht. The waterways of the city had always been used by ships, but the long history meant nothing to people in the 1960s. To modernize their city, the waterways had to go and the motorway took its place. Up to 12 lanes for motor traffic replaced the water. However, between 2010 and 2020, a major urban renewal project undertook the Herculean process of removing the 12-lane motorway and restoring the canal back to its historic and cultural form of glory. Welcome to Leaf of Life, where we feature uplifting stories about life-changing natural solutions. The northwest corner of the Utrecht city center had always been an area bustling with activity. All kinds of traffic competed for available space or land traffic had to wait for ships on the canal to pass. Multiple bridges were built to reduce the waiting times, but traffic kept growing and changing. By the 1960s, one type of traffic had become the dominant force. Motor traffic was filling every centimetre of the available space. To give it even more space, the city turned to the lesser used waterways. The fact that it had been there for centuries was not important. The removal would make way for a motorway in the city centre. The futuristic models would turn into reality. And in 1968, the city started to fill the canal. First dirt replaced the water. Then poles were drilled into the ground to support the future road. The former floor of the canal became concrete. And old bridges were replaced with concrete viaducts. Five years later, in 1973, the first lanes for motor traffic were opened. By the mid-1970s, the motorway was completely finished. But not entirely as planned. Opposition had stopped its development. And that meant the motorway ended after a little over one kilometer in a normal two-lane street, which all rendered the so-called shortest motorway of the Netherlands useless from the beginning. And a return to the old situation was debated almost instantly. However, it took until 2009 before the reversal started. The road was closed and the concrete viaducts were demolished. The concrete floors were taken out and so was every single one of the thousand drilled poles. Almost immediately, the water started filling up the building site and sand had to be brought in to make the site dry again. Then the builders started to build bridges, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, giving exciting hints about where the water would return. Eventually, the outline of the new canal would become clear and brick walls were built to support the future quay. And then it was time to remove the temporary dirt again. While traffic already used the new bridges, the digging started. Meanwhile, trees were brought in. They were planted in a line on one of the canal sides. 
A similar line of trees had been there almost half a century ago. Soon the diggers hit the groundwater again, and the building site started to fill up, but that was already possible. Other teams were still placing concrete elements that would form the edge between the water and the land. Placing them while the canal was still dry was a lot easier. But the digging was sped up, and it drew a lot of attention. The people of Utrecht witnessed their city return to its former self, and they loved every minute of it. The digging teams caught up with the other teams, and the final elements for the edge had to be placed from the land side, because the canal had already filled up with groundwater. The builders were in a hurry, because the city had promised its citizens the return of the water by the end of 2015. In the final two months of the year, things went extremely fast. The day the new canal was connected to the old canal, the water rose instantly to its final level. And on the 18th of December 2015, the city of Utrecht officially opened the canal. And in its almost 900 year history, the motorway was finally gone, and the waterways were back. Utrecht is living proof Green infrastructure provides a variety of benefits to a city. From improved air quality and public health to increased economic activity, Utrecht is an excellent example of how green infrastructure can be used to create a more sustainable, healthy and enjoyable environment.